Hi, I'm Jill from June Taylor. We've all heard of paint by number. Now we have sew by number. This is called quilt as you go, where the pattern is actually printed right on the batting. We start out by cutting around our printed batting and we're gonna attach our backing fabric. And to do that, we can either use quilt basting spray by spraying it on the batting, or we can use our fabric glue stick. This goes on purple, but it dries clear. We're going to cut all our pieces to the size that the directions tell us. We like to starch our fabrics first to get them nice and stiff. And then we're gonna simply follow the directions. So put piece number one in the number one spot like this. Piece number two, right sides together with piece number one on the placement line between one and two. And now you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And we're gonna continue on in the same manner. And we're done with our finish. someone you love an avid quilter meet the ready set go ultimate fabric cutting system this fabric cutter takes the strain out of fabric cutting meaning less chance of injury and better quilts made faster the ultimate fabric cutting system includes the go our innovative fabric cutter with an easy to turn handle that makes cutting fabric safer faster and more accurate this 15 pound fabric cutter has a carrying handle and folding mechanism, so it's portable and easy to store. The Ready, Set, Go also includes the Go Cube Mix and Match 8 inch block, which features eight dies of commonly used geometric shapes and the corresponding cutting mat. The Go Cube Mix and Match system has endless pattern possibilities, but it comes with a 16 page pattern book with two quilt patterns to get you started. 
We like to say the Ready, Set, Go is the ultimate fabric cutting system because it truly comes with everything you need. That includes our Go Strip Cutter, two and a half inch, which finishes to a two inch finish strip, a corresponding cutting mat to make cutting binding strips easier than ever. We've even included a die pick to make die maintenance painless. To help quilters feel confident on their quilting journey, we've also included the Go Cube Mix and Match Blocks and Quilt Pattern Book by Eleanor Burns. It's packed with tips and tricks in addition to inspiration. Look at some of the beautiful projects you can create with this ultimate fabric cutting system. At AccuQuilt, we want to spread the joy of quilting to all, and the Go makes cutting fabric easier than traditional scissors or rotary cutting. AccuQuilt, because cutting time means quilting more. there. In today's show, I'm going to show you how to make a June Taylor project bag that is the perfect size to embellish with our new Go Bee and Beehive die. Stay tuned. Welcome to AccuQuilt Live. I'm Erica Botker, AccuQuilt's creativity expert, and I will be your substitute teacher today as Miss Pam is off on the road. So I am joined, of course, here by the one and only Mr. Brock. Hello, Brock. Hi, Erica. He's off camera because he's multitasking today. So uh, no, my hair just looks so terrible. I couldn't, I couldn't bear to show it to anyone. It was a bad hair day, he said. Love it. Well, we want to see where everybody's watching from today. I've got my phone here. Let's see. Omaha. Linda's watching from Omaha. Hello. I wonder where in Omaha. Newton, Iowa. She says, Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Peggy. Let's see. Who else? Lansing, Michigan. Twin Falls, Idaho. Hi, Marcia in Twin Falls, Idaho. Lots of people from all over. How many of you are busy making uh, pies and things for tomorrow, I wonder? Well, let's get started by showcasing some of the new projects from our intro video. And first up, we've got Karen H. Now, this is really fun. and I've really been eyeing this one and trying to break it apart. Karen H., you're going to have to let us know what all you used. It, very, it feels very tropical to me, like pineapples across the top and the bottom. But I'm thinking she's used the Storm at Sea dye, maybe even. What do you think, Brock? I think you're right. It, it reminds me very much of kind of being surrounded by ivy. Yes, yes. Okay, well, let's take a look at the next one. I love it, though. Ooh, this is Pam Z. This is very seasonally appropriate. This is the Go Maple Leaf dye, and she's got some great fall prints in there. 
and a bias stripe binding. That is outstanding, Pam. Love it. Well, Pam's seasonal fabric leads us right into the picture and the question of the day. So here is a pile of fabric I've been working on pulling together for a project that I'm going to get started. Yes, it's actually a Christmas project. No, I probably won't have it done in time for Christmas, but I fell in love with it. So here's the question. Do you like themed fabric, solids, or a mix of prints? We want to know. Do you have a favorite? I am definitely a print girl. Um, theme, I like seasonal things though too. Uh, but I'm learning to appreciate my solids more. Although I have to say more than solids, I'm more of a blender girl. Uh, blenders, do you know what blenders are, Brock? Uh, yeah, they mix up fruits and stuff. Ah, fruits, yes. Those, uh, those smoothies, no, no, fabric blenders are those fabrics that kind of read as solids, but they're not really solids. So those are gonna be grunge. Miss Pam and my favorite grunge is gonna fit in there. Kind of tone on tone prints, um, really small prints that may be from a back, from stepping back from it, it's gonna read as a solid, but up close it's got some movement and texture to it. It'd be crazy if there actually was a fabric blender. You could just, you know, put fabrics in, and it would blend it, and then like a whole new fabric would come out. Okay, so I've seen kind of that thing, but with people making paper, they like put it into fibers and stuff into a blender with water, and then you spread it out on a screen to make paper. So that's we're kind of a... We're close. So we're close. We're, we're close. Verge. Okay, Brock, do you, have, do you have a fabric preference? Oh, I, solids. Just solid solid black like the color of my heart i knew that was coming i knew that was coming now mama brock is a quilter does she have a favorite do you think would you say what do you what's her style oh more? she's she's a she's a prince she's a prince girl she's got a lot of solids but she, yeah i think she prefers working with prints yeah yeah i i that's why i quilt i just love the fabric i love the all the quilts all the prints and i love it so today, in honor of us talking about the Go Bee and Beehive die, we're gonna give one away. So you wanna be sure you register for the future events because that's how you qualify to win a door prize. Now by registering, you'll also receive an email. That way you're never gonna miss an exciting tutorial and Brock will be announcing our winner at the end of the show. All right. Well, let's get started. Now we are gonna be making a June Taylor quilt as you go project bag. Now it's available at AccuQuilt.com. And we've got the set right here. It comes with two, everything you need to make two bags, just to add fabric. So this is the kit. It's gonna come with printed stabilizer inside of it to make two different sizes of bags. We're actually gonna be making the smaller one today because the layout works really well for our B&B &B hive. And it also is gonna have your project supply list and it's gonna have all of the instructions. Now here's the key. Read the instructions before you get started. And by reading the destruction instructions, I mean the whole front and back of the piece of paper. I know it's a lot to ask, but there's a lot of important information in with helpful tips and preparation that you need to read before you jump in and get started. This is the voice of experience telling you from when I made my first June Taylor Quilt As You Go kit. Now, we're also going to need, along the lines of our fabric, we're gonna need 76 inches of two and a half wide strips. That's gonna become our binding. We're gonna need our Go B&B &B Hive die and some fused fabric for it. So here's our die. We're gonna get started with cutting our B&B &B Hive shapes. And you can see this is kind of the hive background. And then these are like the rings that go on top of it. This gives real dimension to your beehive and it's just such a fun shape. Now the circle over here is gonna be the little door because you gotta have a way to get in and out of anybody's house, right? We've got our bee and we've got our little wings here. So let's go ahead and cut our beehive and our bee. 
So you want to go ahead and put fusible on the back. Now we've got all kinds of fusible products on our website. There's my B. Because you know what? You can find B stripe fabric if you look. And here is, oh, this is going to, I'm going to cut this apart for the wings. So the wings, I've got some sparkly, it's white grunge, but it's sparkly. Brock, can we remind everybody how many layers of prefused fabric we can put on here at a time? Uh, oh. We certainly can. Would you like me to do that? I would love you to do that. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go with four. Which would be ding, 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 correct? Yes, nailed it. Nailed it. I'm gonna put a mat on top because nothing happens without the mat and come over to the cutter. Now this is on a six by 12 die board. It's gonna fit through any of our cutters and you're gonna to wanna to use, if you're cutting all the shapes like we are, go ahead and use a six by 12 mat. If you're just cutting bees, you can get away with using a smaller mat. You can always go smaller, but it has to be covered with fabric and a mat to get a good result, to get any result as a matter of fact. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that off. And we've got our shapes here. So here's our beehive. Now I've got, let's see, let's get organized here. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. And as long as we're laying that out, we may as well press it, right? Okay, I'm gonna heat that up. So my background square, I've already cut. We're gonna talk about cutting. Here is, going to be the center of the back of my project bag right here. This is where we're going to go ahead and fuse our bee and beehive onto. So we cut it with the paper on the back, so now I just have to peel it off the back. This is actually our Fuse Me, which is on available on our website, but we have lots of great fusible products available. So you can see that's kind of the back of my beehive. And I'm going to give that just a little light press to keep it in place while we get ready. Oh, it's not warmed up yet. To add the rest of our pieces. Brock, are we having questions? We do have a couple of questions right off the bat. Uh, so Daniel wants us to clarify how it is that uh, we register to win. Well, Daniel. Just by registering to watch this show, you have registered already. You only have to do it once anymore. Right. Uh, which is great. So you register once uh, on our website, on the events page for all of our upcoming shows. You'll get the emails notifying you of uh, what's coming up when we're starting. And then uh, your name goes into the little pool of names and uh, I pick them when I gotta choose winners. There you go. You heard it. You heard it from the man here. So that's how we pick. What other questions and comments do we have? We did have a question from Irene who wanted to know, can the, is the owl die small enough to fit on a mug rug? Is the owl small enough to fit on a mug rug? I suppose that's going to depend on the size of your mug rug. That's true. You could make a giant mug rug. You could make a giant mug rug that was more like a snack mat. I always like a good snack mat myself. but. The owl, do we have an owl on the set? Uh, top left. Other side. Okay, so this is our owl. If you aren't familiar with our owl, super, super cute. So this owl has been made three dimensional. Um, we've put a bottom on it, but so the owl shape is right here. So let's see if I lay our owl down. Uh, one, two, three, four, five and a half inches tall about for our owl. I think that's a great size. We'll just put him over there like a mascot. Hang out with the bees. All right, I'm still peeling paper off of my shapes, Brock. So do we have any more questions or comments on fabric? Say so we, we've covered the questions. So now we're getting into the comments, which, oh boy, do people have their opinions. Oh, I'm sure. So uh, one thing I'm seeing a lot of is it depends on the project you're making. True. Which is very true. That is very true. A lot of people like to like to mix and match 
uh, you know, like to use some prints and, and some solids or themes and solids. You know, it just depends on what you're making, what you're going I would, for. I would put myself in that category. But quilters do, as a rule, feel very passionate about their fabric choices. Oh, yes. You never want to question that. Uh, one of those quilters is Terry, who dropped in the comment, um, I love it all, but as long as it's blue. As long as it's blue? As long as they're blue. As long as they're blue. Okay. Okay. I wonder if it's a shade. Let us know. Is it a shade of blue or is it just any blue? All right. I am laying out my beehive here real quick. So I've got my rings added on. I'm going to press that down while we're looking. And then I'm going to add my little, my little door over here. And my wings. Okay, so most of this is fabric that Pam picked out for this project for me. I did pull this. So this is a great example of a blender, the little door, because it's a black with a little gray kind of random hatch, hash marks on it. And from where you're looking, I'm sure it looks solid, solid color. We've got another blender back here. Again, this, this came out, I know this came out of my, my collection also, but it's yellow and it's got like a little white cross hatch in it. And all of the grunge would be considered blenders as well. Okay. There, isn't that cute? Do we have it on the overhead? It's so cute. Now this is gonna form the center of our project. So we've got that kind of made, put away, and you'd want to go ahead and embroider or um, applique this down. I'm gonna show you what the one that I already made. I just did a straight stitch around all the shapes with black thread. And really what that does is help pull out the design, help it really pop. So the next step that you're gonna wanna do is to get all of your, pull together your fabric that you're gonna be using and you wanna starch it all with the Starch Savvy product. Now this stuff is great. And if you've been watching for a long time, you know I have not been a starch person. I'm a lazy quilter and if I could skip a step, I would. But I have been converted with this stuff. This is great. So you're gonna wanna spray this on your fabric, let it sit there for a couple of seconds, and then press it out. And what that does is make it a little bit stiffer, and I do like working with a nice crunchy fabric, but it's also gonna press it out really well and you're gonna get great seams. So again, as I mentioned before, directions. These are pivotal. These are really important. So the other thing that I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna get this out of our way for a minute, is the printed stabilizer that forms the key of the quilt. So probably the first thing you wanna do is pull your clear vinyl out and go ahead and yeah, you can kind of see it's there and cut it down and let it just sit there and relax because it's gonna have some little light folds in it and it'll just relax out of there. Cut your backing, which is actually in a way kind of your front. I'll show you in the middle. And now we need to trim around our printed stabilizer. So while I do that, it's a good time for us to discuss fabric choices, Brock. Yes, so we did get some clarification, uh, another comment from Terry, who the reason she loves her blues so much is she grew up on a lake in Pennsylvania. Oh. So it reminds her of water. Well. You know, it's childhood memories. You know. You can't argue with that. If you've grown up around water, it's really hard to then be landlocked, I think. So I'm just cutting around this, leaving about a half to three quarters of an inch. This is going to be for our header. I'm gonna set that aside. And then this is gonna be the body of our bag. Okay. 
So what you would do with this then, your next step would be to go ahead and follow again our directions and cut all of your strips to size and everything's listed out. We're doing the 16 inch bag. So you wanna go ahead and cut all of your fabrics and I've done that because I wanna to get to everything today, but I need to press these. So don't let me forget. I'll remember when we get there. Okay, once you've done that, it's time to get started with some sewing. And I'm gonna move my vinyl over here out of the way so it's safe. Take my backing. Now we're calling this backing, but because of how the bag is put together, this is gonna be what you see through the vinyl on the front of the bag. So you wanna make it something cute, right? Look at this cute bee fabric Pam found for me to use. So now it's time, I wanna cut this down a little further. We want to, I'm gonna use basting spray. The June Taylor basting spray is great. I have used it for years and years and years. I use it for all kinds of things actually, but I do use it with my embroidery too to hold my stabilizer and my background together. Okay, you can be rough cut that, doesn't matter. I'm gonna turn it over and you want to be, I've been known to be kind of haphazard about this, but I have learned you wanna be very even with it. Then you can turn it over and center it on your fabric, start in the center and smooth it out from there. And that's just gonna help you keep all those layers together, right quilters? We wanna keep everything together. Now, I've talked about this being printed. Let's take a look. It's really quilt by numbers and it's fantastic because right here in the middle, we've got square number one. Oh, I almost forgot a step. And this is a really important one. You want to go ahead before you get started. I'm gonna do it right now so I don't forget. And sew around this outer line. And it's not so much as keeping our layers together. Well, it is keeping our layers together, but with the basting spray does a great job of that. This is really giving us our cutting line for later on in the project. So we wanna go ahead and sew that. And this is a pivotal part because otherwise you're not gonna know where to trim and you're going to be confused later on. All right, Brock, I'm sewing, so what do we have for questions and comments and fabric? Okay, so Robin, Allison, April, Carol, Crystal, Linda, all prefer a mix of print fabric. Not all, not all the same, not all one thing, just a nice mix, <laughs> mix and match of prints. I am, I'm such a print girl, yeah. Uh, let's see, Jojo likes her theme fabric. Yes. Uh, Barbara is prints all the way. Uh, let's see, we had a comment from uh, Linda H. who says we're evil for making her choose between all three of them. You don't have to choose. I, we need a second, we need a fourth option that is I love all the fabric all the time. Yeah, but if we do that, then it's, you know, it's not Okay, fun. well, but we, then we, it's not as interesting. So, okay, so I'll, I'll take credit. I'm the evil one and say, yes, choose. Choose one kind of fabric. <laughs> Brock says you have to choose. Yep. Or else we don't have anything to talk about. Uh, see, Shelly has said uh, she likes solids with tiny prints. Solid with what? Tiny prints. Tiny prints. You know, that's a really great comment, and here's why. If you are somebody who likes working, I'm gonna guess that she likes working with small pieces like I do. And if you work with small pieces, you want small prints. If you like working with big pieces, then you can really go to some of those bigger prints. But keeping that scale in mind is really important, quilters. If you've got a great 
big floral fabric and you are working with your four inch cube, you are not gonna see that print, right? You, you keep in mind when you're looking at fabric, what you're gonna be doing with it. That's a great point. What else, Brock? Yeah, so we had another comment here, one that I'm a little suspicious of. Uh, comment is from Mindy, who says, I like themed fabric, but mainly Halloween. <laughs> I'm not convinced this isn't Pam in disguise. <laughs> Except she's driving, so I feel like she wouldn't be messaging. Oh, I feel like I, I feel like isn't. for this topic she would figure yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Like a you know talk voice voice to chat voice to talk. Well, that's true, and she does that a lot. No, but if, if that's if that's not Pam, then Mindy, you and Pam have a lot in common. Okay, here's an interesting tidbit about our Pam. So when we travel and we're driving together, and she's got her phone hooked up so that it can give us directions. Uh, or you asked, uh, ask Alexa something, her Alexa is a, a British, male British voice. That is true. Took me by surprise. Uh, <laughs> Did it take you by surprise when you went to Kansas City? Yeah, when we, when we road tripped. Okay. Not expecting. It, yes. Not expecting quite a distinguished gentleman to be yes. giving us our directions. Yes, yes. Okay. Now it's time for a glue stick. And this is the temporary glue stick. This is the June Taylor one. It goes on purple, but it stays clear. And I like to put this under my first piece to know that it's gonna be really anchored. Yes, you could pin it. And I know that this flies in the face of what you think of me doing, but I'm gonna use the glue stick. Because it's any, so is easy. Is there any good way or specific way to lay out the glue in like an evenly manner, or is it just I don't sure you get the really edges and a little bit in the middle? I, I, nobody from June Taylor has told me it matters yet, so I'm going to say it doesn't matter until somebody tells me. Now I just laid this down, but I'm going to tell you something. If you were going to embroider or stitch around this, you would want to do that first before you attach it to your project. So I've got one that I've already started and I'm going to pull that over here for us. So I'm gonna slide this one over here and get this one that I've already started so you can see. Okay, so you can see I already went ahead and stitched around my shapes here and got it started. I stuck my center square down and these are my first two pieces. So what I did was lay out piece number two. And again, follow the directions. They're going to tell you what to do. But you put piece number two here. These blue lines are placement lines, not stitching lines. And that's really important. So you're going to put it down edge to edge, stitch a quarter inch seam allowance, just like we do when we're doing any other piecing. And then you can turn it over. You don't want to use your iron yet on this, but you can use your seam wand. And this is the June Taylor Magic Seam Wand. And it's going to help you get that great crisp seam. You could also use your fingernail if you wanted to, but this works really well. And you know, here's another tip. You can actually take your hot iron and heat this up a little bit and then use it heated to help you. But because we've starched this fabric with the starch savvy, you're going to get really great little crisp seams there. So now we're ready for, this is piece one, piece two, piece three, we're ready for piece four. I've got all my pieces cut because I told you to do that before. I'm going to line it up here on my placement line and I think I will grab a pin or two and take this to the sewing machine. I'm going to be doing this one and then I'm going to do piece five. So I'm going to go ahead and lay it down. Again, line it up on that blue line. That's your placement line. I'm going to put a couple pins in it take it to the machine so that we can talk fabric. All right, Brock, I'm ready to talk fabric. Okay, so we actually, we have a question here. Okay. That may require a demonstration. All right, I'll stop. 
So uh, we had a, uh, a nice long comment from Kelly who says, uh, any tips on getting the dye fabric mat started through the go me? I find that I need to hold the go me down with my left hand, use the right hand to crank the wheel, and then my left thigh or hip <laughs> to push the board while turning the handle. Once it started, no issues. No issue. But getting it started is difficult. I feel like I'm missing a key tip. You know, I... It's easier to me if you're using a six by six die because then you can kind of hold it down and push it in. You can kind of push it in and hold it down with the one hand. Um, it, you do have to be up against the roller system. With the Go and the Go Me, it's a roller system. And if you're not right up against that roller, it's not gonna engage. So you do have to be pushed up right against that. Um, with the Go Big, of course, it's electric. It's gonna grab it from you. So if you're used to using a go big and having it just kind of take it from you, it is harder. Um, it shouldn't be quite that big of a um, gymnastics move for you. So you might, I don't know how many layers you're using, but that, I don't know if that's a factor, but you do need to have it right up against that roller for it to engage because it's not gonna pull it in itself like it does on the big. I hope that answers the question, Kelly. Yeah, and I feel like you may be able to kind of use the die to push down. Right, the right, I, I, that's, into the I guess that's what I was trying to say, but my words were failing me, Brock. I oh, kind of push I... down and, oh, and in on the die itself and then crank with the other hand. Yeah, and then once you get it started, then you can place your other hand on right. top and kind of help. Now I do find that when I am using a go, one of the manual cutters, it's helpful to stand up for me. I do better if I'm standing up. Um, with the go big, a lot of times I sit down. The go big, you can be lying down. You can be, you can be having a nap and running your fabric through. Well, it kind of does the work for you. I kind of love that. Okay. Now we did size four, piece four, and I'm just gonna kind of chain piecing. Now, here's another tip that I discovered after I did my second one. Oh, don't look at that. I've got my stitches, my threads kind of. Um, pay attention to what your bobbin thread is when you're making this project, because this is a quilt as you go. I'm sewing through all my layers. My stitching is gonna show through the vinyl pocket on the front of my project. So that is important for us to keep in mind. So it's not gonna be the end of the world. I guess if you're using black, you're gonna see stitches around, but it might interrupt your fabric. So you know, you might not want it to be orange or green or something. So just pay attention to what your bobbin thread is. A lot of times I mostly use either gray or white, neither of those would work just fine with this particular fabric. But again, if you had a black background fabric, you probably want black thread. So just a little tip. What else have we got, Brock? So as you can imagine, lots of people are still giving their opinions on what kind of fabric they like. So. Celia is a mix of prints. I tend to use embroidery in my quilting a lot, so I like some solids in the mix to do the embroideries on. Patty Z says, I'm a mix and match kind of person. If a fabric design jumps out at me, I walk past it. If or, or, I don't walk past it, uh, I will pick it up and put it in my basket and purchase several yards of it. <laughs> Then I run around looking for matching fabrics to put with it. No organization. It's just a method of the madness kind of person. You know, when I first started quilting, it would take me sometimes months to pick out all the fabric for a project. I was just so meticulous with my choices. I've, I've gotten way better at it as I've gone along. Okay, we've got our side pieces on. We're ready to take our little magic seam wand and get these kind of pressed out, finger pressed out, pressed out with our seam wand while we go on and answer questions and talk fabric. I love talking fabric. It's like my favorite thing to do. All 
Okay, and you can see this works really well. And because we use that start savvy, it's just given us a nice crisp seam. And we're up to ready for piece six and seven. Now, I pre-cut mine because I told you to do that. And here's my next piece. And I want it to be right like this. I'm gonna lay it out here. And again, I'm gonna put a couple pins on it just to get me to the machine comfortably. And because I'm a pinner, I know some of you out there are like, ugh, why is she bothering? I don't know, it's what I do. I'm gonna take the other piece. I want it to be, I think, like this. This is a kind of all over print and it's got words on it. Because Pam picked it out and she loves fabric with words on it. So I just wanna, it's, but it's not really directional. That's a good question. We should ask if people like working with directional fabric or not. That's a question. That's a whole nother kettle of worms or kettle of fish. Yeah, I don't know if we wanna. We I don't think we better get today. into that one. That's, that's, that's a topic for another day. That is. That could be controversial. All right. But we actually do have one question here that goes along with this. Um, Terry Kay from Columbus, Nebraska asked, do you have to backstitch when you're working on a Quilt As You Go project? You know, you really don't. Sometimes I do because it's nature to me, but you really don't have to because we're sewing over our seams, much like we do when we're piecing. All right, we've got another question here from Ellie who asks, I have the Go uh, crank, but am getting the Go big soon. Do I need a piece to make the back level for the die to come out on? It doesn't look like it comes with anything. You know, that is a great question. That's a question we get a lot, Ellie, and you are good to ask that. Hold, please. My allergy season in Nebraska. So you don't really need to. If I, and I will tell you, I don't have anything behind mine at home. It will tip down and it will just stay there. We are, um, we have this great cutting table here in the studio that has that as part of the table. Um, it's a horn cabinet, it is on our website. Um, it comes that way. So that is how that, came to be, but you don't need it. It's just gonna tip down. You need something in it. Oh, I brought different fab, different threads and they're going all over the place, sorry. Um, you don't need it. It's just gonna tip down on the table and wait for you. Don't worry about it. Go get the pie out of the oven, it'll be fine. What else? Uh, so we're getting questions from people uh, Surprisingly, asking for demonstrations about uh, what we were talking about with that Go Me, about running it through the cutter. Oh, okay. Maybe how we could show holding on. So we've got one on the back shelf there under the pumpkin. Okay. So maybe here in a second, once you get this all ironed out, we can okay. go over that with some folks. Okay. Yes. So I've added pieces six and seven. And Magic C1 time again. Magic seam one time again. And I'm ready with pieces eight and nine. And right after I get this part done, I will, I didn't turn this sideways. Okay, I know I'm pinning this funny, but it's how it's facing. Um, I will go grab that go me and we'll take a look. We shall we shall cut something together. I can cut a bee. I can practice without any fabric on it too. Um, but let's get as my mother would say, one thing at a time. Focus on one thing at a time. Actually I say that to my 
used to say that to my children. Now I say that to my grandchildren. Focus. All right, I'm going to focus here. Brock, if we're having questions, just interrupt me in. Yep, uh, we just had one come in uh, wanting to know, is there an embroidery design set for the beehive die? Oh, by golly, there are several. So there is the free outline embroidery with the three stitches. Our free, our non-designer dies all come with three free stitches. Um, it's basic outline. It's gonna have a blanket stitch, a satin stitch, and a motif stitch. And then there are also some really cute designs on there to purchase for download, including one that is a little queen bee who is super cute. So be sure you take a look. Oh, there's one that makes the beehive like a, a Christmas tree. It has Christmas lights and little Santa bees. Super cute. Be sure, I should have brought in samples. I was so focused on making this project bag. I didn't even think about that quilters but be sure to check it out on our website at AccuQuilt.com. Go to embroidery. They're probably all gonna be under the new section. Super cute. Now this B&B &B Hive die is our die to try for the month of November, which means that it is around for the month of November or while supplies last. And I have to tell you quilters, this one is selling pretty darn quick. So if you have your heart set on one, I would get it ordered sooner rather than later. That's my tip of the day. Okay. What else have we got going on? Oh, here we go. Okay, we're ready for another step. Never mind, Brock, I was just kidding. So I'm going to press this out with my seam wand. And now that I've got this all pretty much covered. I can actually use my iron with it too, as long as I don't get it over my stabilizer. Because my next step is gonna be sewing around the outside edges. So hold. How are we doing for time? Oh, good grief, I gotta move on. Okay. Because I wanna put together the other part. So, if we have time, I will come back. But I wanna get to the header and the zipper because that's the really fun, exciting part. So the next step on this is gonna be to go ahead and sew around the outside edge and trim it down, and then you're gonna set it aside. For right now, I'm gonna set it aside so we can talk about the header piece. So the here's our header piece. Now I took my stabilizer that was printed. I cut my fabric according to directions and here's where you can just use a plain whatever for the back of the header because that's not gonna be seen. I've sewn it together. You wanna quilt this and I did just some straight line quilting on it and I used this little uh, doohickey if you will and on my machine, it fits into the back of the foot assembly, and you can use this gauge to sew different widths away from a stitch. So your last row is gonna be where you stitch. So I stitched this line first, and then I wanted an inch, so I set it up for an inch so I could sew inch widths. But you could quilt this however you wanted to. And now that it's quilted, I need to trim it down. And I really wanted to do that, but I want to do the zipper part because this is super cool. And I have to do a go me. Okay. This is the June Taylor rotary cutter. It is nice. It's a super sharp. I do love a new rotary cutter, but it, oh, I needed the longer one. Oops, hold please. It locks and it's very comfortable. It's got a nice ergonomic shape to it. You hold down on the button, you pull the lever. And I'm trying 
trimming. I'm trimming. Okay. Should I take a minute after I trim this Brock to do a go me? We can save that for the end. Okay. All right, keep me on track. Okay. And okay. So there's my header. It's all trimmed and ready to go. Now it's zipper time. Okay. So I'm going to start, get all the threads off my zipper. Here is my zipper. It's so fantastic. Now this is the easiest zipper you are ever going to work with in your whole life because it is a zippity do done. And these zippers are already set on both sides into a casing. I think you can kind of see it's dark. So, so what you need to do is take, whoops, it's the bottom of it. I'm going to sit, put this in between. So it's got, it's like a double fold bias tape. And I'm going to put it on here, get it kind of sandwiched in there, if you will. Okay, can you see how I've got that? stuck in there. I'm going to use a pin just to get me started. And I'm going to real quick change my thread color to black. All right, what else is going on, Brock? Well, we've got a bunch more questions here. So Deb asks, will you quilt that whole piece when you're done? I think that was uh, when we were working on it. You know, I quilted, uh, the quilting that you're going to do, you should have done by this time. So I quilted just straight lines between the stabilizer, the backing, the, the printed stabilizer, the front and the back. And I just did straight lines, even though it's not puffy like a batting is. Um, once you're done, with sewing the strips together for the back, you can absolutely go in and add more quilting if you want to. But again, the part of the joy, if you will, of the quilt as you go is you don't have to. Wait, I have to focus and thread this needle. You don't have to. You can just go on. And I think that's awesome. Okay. Now, I don't even need a zipper foot. You remember what a problem the zipper foot was with Miss Pam last week. I don't need that because this is already set in a casing. I just need to come over here and sew it right along the edge. There we go. You just keep it Sandwiched together here. And this is going to be the top for our bag. Okay. Okay, how slick is that? I'm halfway done with my zipper already. Didn't even break a sweat, look at that. It's already put in. Now, the other part of the front, I got a mess going on, is my vinyl. This is gonna work, and it's, it's hard to see quilters, I apologize. But this is gonna go in, and I just wanna make sure we're basically even with my top. I'm gonna trim it all to make sure I'm sandwiching this in between into my zippity doo done just like I did before. And I will give you a pro tip if you've never worked with vinyl. It's going to sew just fine on my machine, but quilters don't pin it. I repeat, don't pin it. Because you know, if you put a pin through fabric, 
fabric goes, okay, you pinned me, you took me out, my threads are gonna go back together and, and it's all cool. Vinyl is not like that. If you put a hole in vinyl, that hole is gonna stay there. So, don't pin through your vinyl unless you want a hole there forever. I think we, trust me, it, this works way simpler than you think it's going to. And these project bags are so fun. These would be great holiday gifts for your quilting friends. If Pam's really nice, I'll give her one of the ones I'm making. Okay, there, it's done. So we've set in our zipper already. How slick is that? It is all the way done. Now, what I want to do is trim up my edge on either side just to make sure my vinyl is even. There we go. So slick. Turn it the other way. I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay. Now I am going to do a little back stitching right now, right a little extra right along the end of my zipper just to avoid any possible catastrophe of the end of my zipper coming off. And that's super easy to do. I'm just gonna go back and forth over it a couple of times, a quarter inch, that's where my seam's gonna be. And this is why you wanna be sure you use your zippity-doo that comes in the kit. If you're using a different zipper other than a zippity-doo and you're setting it in a traditional way, I don't know why you would, but this one comes in the kit. Um, be sure it's a nylon zipper and it's not a metal one because if it is, you're going to make your sewing machine very sad if you try to sew through a metal zipper. So we did have a couple of questions come in from some folks uh, that kind of had the similar idea of, would you be able to use the glue stick on the vinyl when you're putting it into the zipper to help keep it down? Sure. Like if you didn't want to pin it, could yeah. you use the glue stick for it? Yeah, you absolutely can do that. You absolutely can do that. I have time for this. I'm gonna do it real quick so I can trim it. You absolutely can do that if you want to, whatever. As they say, makes your heart happy. No, that, you absolutely can use the glue stick on that if that makes it easier for you to, to work with. It's not at all a problem. We had another question here from Jean who asked the question, uh, what is the difference between Best Press and June Taylor's starch product? Um, they are similar products. They are similar products. I like the Start Savvy a little bit better. It doesn't have a scent. I know not all of the, um, not all of the Best Press has a scent, but I like the, I feel like I get a little bit crisper uh, seam with it, a little bit crisper fabric with the Start Savvy. And I also really, like I said, I like that it doesn't have a scent to it, so. Is good. And we have one more question here from Irene, uh, okay. who says, the bumblebee, you said earlier that you straight stitch around the bee. Would that make it fray at all? Um, you may have a little fray. You might. So you can use whatever you want to. I don't mind that. I kind of like the look. That's a personal choice. If you don't, you can use, and you have an embroidery machine, I would totally take my background fabric and hoop it 
and embroider that on and use either the free download or one of the programs. If you don't want to do that and or you don't have an embroidery machine, you can use a decorative stitch, use a blanket stitch on your machine. It's going to cut down on that fray. Um, this is a project bag. I'm not too worried about it. You know, I'm not going to be throwing it in the washer. I'm not going to be, you know, nobody's going to be wearing it. I'm not going to be eating dinner on it. So I'm not really worried about it. But that is a total, you know, that is the great thing about these June Taylor kits as far as I'm concerned. You really get to personalize them. Really make them your own and do it the way you want to do it. I love it. Then as an additional question, uh, Irene had the question of, can you top stitch over very light heat and bond? Sure, absolutely. Um, I always say to use a lightweight or a featherweight stabilizer. I just think that it's, um, it's your best course of action when you're gonna be stitching on it, no matter what brand it is. Okay, now, because you sewed this, along that blue line earlier, before we got started, you can now go use that stitching mark to trim up and trim this off so that you can put your front and back together. So that is why you do that. But you can see how if you did not do that step, you would miss it when you went to trim it. Another question here from Christine D. I uh, wanted to know, does the vinyl, do you ever have problems with the vinyl sticking to your machine or foot? You know, I have not really experienced that. I've, I've, done, I've done a fair number of projects with it. Um, but you can get, oh, there are products that are kind of like a Teflon sheet that stick to the top of your sewing machine that help eliminate that if that's something you're experiencing. Like I said, I really haven't had, I haven't noticed having issues with it. Usually if you're doing a project with vinyl, you're not doing that much with it. I got such a mess. So now this is the fun part. This is gonna be actually the back, whoops. This is the back, this is the inside. Now, when this goes on top of it, look how cute this is. Look, isn't it adorable? We're gonna put it together, and then before I go ahead and sew this together, I, so you've got your zipper here. Let's talk a zipper a minute. Here's your zippity do done. You can leave it just like this, and the kits come, you can get black, you can get white, I think there's some other colors too. You can leave it like this. You could use your sewing machine and do some decorative stitching. Or I took my one and a half inch cut, one inch finished strip die and cut some fabric strips. Then I pressed them in about a quarter inch on either side. I'm gonna stitch this down like a little ribbon almost, or you could use ribbon quite frankly, to really deck it out a little bit extra. And then that black is just gonna peek out and just kind of highlight it. So I would do that next. The next thing you're gonna do is go ahead, put them together, check if you have to trim off the bottom. I need to trim my vinyl a little bit when I'm done. And then you're gonna bind it just like you would bind anything else. Here's my binding. I channeled Pam and did a stripe binding. I plan to sew mine to the front of my project bag, wrap it around to the back, and stitch in the ditch to finish it. When you're doing this, this is where you want to be sure you've got some binding clips because this is gonna make all the difference in the world. So when you're putting this together to stitch, use those binding clips to hold everything together when you take it to the machine and use these again when you wrap it around to stitch in the ditch to finish it off. And that's how you make a quick and easy 
project bag. So fun. Zips, unzip it. You can keep your projects in there, keep your fabric and your patterns together, and you're all ready to go to your next sewing day. All right, we promised a Go Me demo, right? I am gonna go get a Go Me. Brock, what can we talk about while I do that? Uh, we've you know, covered a lot of stuff. This is a very, very <laughs> popular uh, show for us. A lot of people wanting to see how this goes. Other side, yes. under the pumpkin. Under the pumpkin. Meet me under the pumpkin. Okay. Now, when you have a go big, like we said, you just, it just kind of sucks it through. But with our go me, we want to push this up next to the roller and turn. And then I will put a hand over here while I'm cranking. Did that help? I think you can kind of, if you've got a six by 12, depending on the side of your hand, you can kind of push it, hold it and push it. I'm kind of holding on to the handle. There's this little handle down there. So you can kind of use that as a leverage to hang on to it and have your thumb behind the board. That's how I do it. I had to actually do it to see. Can you see that, Greg? I'll turn it towards you. So if I take that out of there, I've got my hand like this. Does that help quilters? I hope that helps. Yeah, there's a, f there's a few, a few different ways that you can sure. do it to make it as convenient for you as you can. You know, whatever is comfortable, but that's how I do it. I tend to hang on right here and just kind of put, get it butted up there with my thumb. And if you start with it butted right up against the roller too, that's gonna help. Yeah. All right, what else should we answer? Oof, boy, I think we have covered enough for today. Okay. We have covered so, Yeah, and, and a reminder for everyone that these videos do live on our social media yes. pages. So if you miss yes. something, you can go back, you can watch it again, and, you know, do this all right along with Erica. That's right. I had to kind of do a Reader's Digest version on this because I wanted to get to our, our demo, and we're right up against time. So I guess since it's almost that time, we should have Brock announce the winner of our Go Bee and Beehive die. Yes, uh, Maestro, drum roll please. The winner is Terry F. from Walpole, Massachusetts. Oh, congratulations, Terry. Oh, that's great. Now, don't forget to check out all the savings that we have available on our website. We have got some pre Black Friday savings available for you today only that are gonna give you up to 57% off select items. Now you can also find our products, don't forget, at your local AccuQuilt retailer, including the great B&B Hive, the die to try for the month, that is almost out of stock. So don't forget to get your B&B Hive die. Now, on behalf of our entire team, we hope you have a blessed Thanksgiving holiday with family and friends, and we will see you again later. Thanks so much for watching. To learn more about your quilting craft, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can check out the events page on the AccuQuilt website for more details on upcoming shows. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, visit our blog for exclusive tutorials filled with tips and tricks. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Join us for next week's Quilt AccuQuilt Live as we cut and show you a block from the Go Friendship Channel.